Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Joining us now to review headlines in today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Ohi Odia. Good morning, Ohi. Morning, Leila. How are morning, you? Morning, Good Dr. Abati. Yes. Uh, let, let's kickstart things with um, the controversy that is on right now. Okay. We've all talked about the Punch editorial. But yesterday, Daily Trust also came out with its own editorial castigating the Punch. Um, if you look at the comment from the editorial of Daily Trust, it says, my, uh, it says, everything considered, we believe that Punch went overboard in its reaction. It has the right to take a position on any issue, but to describe an elected government as a regime and to refuse to recognize the president by statutory title is an attempt to delegitimize an elected president and the government he heads. While it is sometimes difficult by the nature of newspapers to draw a sharp dividing line, Punch stand cross the boundary between journalism and activism and could cause problems for proper journalism practice in the future. Dr. Bata, you've been on this job for a while. You were chairman and editorial board of The Guardian. For 11 years. I, yes. really, I really want so, your take on this. A paper <laughs> taking on another paper and an editorial. Yeah, well, I mean, um, every uh, newspaper has its own ideology, has its own position, vision, mission. Uh, but I think that what I find very strange here is the Daily Trust trying to do for the uh, Buhari administration uh, a job. Yeah, someone, uh, someone described it as a third press release. The <laughs> first from <laughs> Femi Additional, then Gabriel Shield, yeah. then Daily Trust. That's trying to write right. a press release uh, on behalf of the government. So why newspapers have their own ideological positions, I think one newspaper responding to the other and, you know, benchmarking its own comment uh, as a response to the ideological position taken by another paper looks a bit, uh, you know, untidy. Okay. Because then, you know, the, um, in terms of perception, the reader is just likely to assume that, oh, this is PR. You know, this is, uh, you know, uh, something being done, you know, as a, as a project, as a contract. However, the debate is useful. We have the punch insisting that uh, the Buhari administration is dictatorial, is fascist, and that the president himself is uh, conducting himself after the fashion of a military dictator. And then we have another newspaper balancing it out and saying, look, Punch overreached yeah. itself, uh, that the uh, facts do not support the conclusion reached by uh, the Punch newspaper. Well, I mean, um, it could have been handled differently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Daily Trust could not, maybe shouldn't have used his uh, editorial column you could have published opinion pieces from informed persons, you know, and the, uh, my, the media team of the president. I expected that, you know, if they were to handle this well, who have by now deployed a number of opinion writers, you know, spokespersons going on television to engage Punch robustly. But they've done something extraordinary, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I don't think the publishers of Daily Trust just woke up and thought, Responding to Punch was, uh, you know, the most important editorial of the day to write. <laughs> uh, but in any case, as I said, the conversation is useful. You know, in my time as chairman editorial board, uh, we would not have done that, mm -hmm. you know, at The Guardian. We would not have gone that way, you know. But we could publish opinion mm -hmm. in a liberal newspaper, you know, that encourages all shades of opinions. But to use the platform of our newspaper, you know, our editorial column to respond to another newspaper, I don't think looks really good. I think it's quite untidy. Yeah. And someone was wondering, what if the punch today had responded also via his editorial? But he didn't. Uh, the oh, editorial the was punch on, has... No, no, no. Was, the editorial was on something else. I think they were speaking on uh, beyond signing the MOU with the port of Antwerp. So just left the matter. Case, yeah. like said, mm. The debate is useful. It's useful, yeah. But it doesn't change anything. Uh, mm -hmm. President Buhari is there comfortably uh, for a second time. It's just, you know, the only footnote we can add is that the government should also uh, respond, you know, be responsive to public opinion, because mm -hmm. public opinion is at the heart of democracy. Sure. But in any case, no matter how magisterial the punch editorial may be, it's still, you know, a point of view. So let all uh, shades of opinion uh, <laughs> bloom. Yes, yeah. flourish, flower, yeah. yes. Yeah. Let's move on to the punch, as we're talking about the punch. Uh, the top headline of the punch today says, National Assembly, 37 billion naira renovation. Members adamant approved 22 billion for Fema's road repairs orders. National Assembly in the mess needs renovation, according to reps. 
Sarah plans legal action to stop controversial projects. Yeah, the fact that for the road projects, maintenance of road projects in Nigeria, they've approved 22.89 billion. But for the repairs at the National Assembly, you're having 37 billion naira. This debate is still on. Uh, 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 we talked about this yesterday, uh, Leila, spending 37 billion naira to renovate, mm -hmm. while for the roads, which are much more important, the maintenance, what we have is 22.89 billion. Tackling poverty, mm. more important. Yeah. I can list, I can list a hundred things that are more important than spending a hundred million dollars or 37 billion naira renovating the National Assembly right now. I think it's just a bit insensitive to the climbs of Nigeria of today. I just, I just don't see how, I, I don't see how it can be justified. I'm okay. sorry. Well, you know, yesterday I said, well, you know, we shouldn't jump to any conclusions because we don't have enough details. When an organization or an institution talks about renovation, you need to know the facts before you know you dismiss what has been proposed. Because a budget, in a budget, there's line by line breakdown of uh, you know the uh, content of the subheads. You know, so yesterday I was very reluctant, mm -hmm. and I had raised the question that well, you know, a number of questions that should be asked if the National Assembly. Complex. It's a complex. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a mini uh, neighborhood, you know, with uh, many departments. If it's in a very bad shape, yes, if they want to renovate it, I don't have a problem. I'm not a quantity surveyor, except I see the details. You know, I cannot question or query the figure uh, that they are talking about. I, I'm, a, I'm assuming that before they came up to, with uh, 37 billion, mm -hmm. they will have consulted quantity surveyors. They will have done the basic uh, homework. And in any case, it's not as if they are going to spend that money without, you know, uh, recourse to the Bureau for Public Procurement. So due diligence, I expect, uh, will follow. But if the National Assembly complex is in a bad shape, then we should fix it. It's not a property of individual lawmakers. That's a public asset. It belongs to the Nigerian people, mm -hmm. you know. So to the extent that it's not a constituency project, right? You know, I, I really don't have All a problem with renovation. the optics, the fact that we're spending less for much more important that's, things. That's my point. Well, exactly. I mean, you don't know. It's about the details. It's about what is involved. If mm. they are spending uh, $22 billion on uh, roads, roads which roads are these? You know, where are they? Uh, what is the nature of the roads? What is the breakdown? I don't like, it's like commenting on a court judgment when you have not read yes. the, the ruling. <laughs> you okay. know, so I don't, okay. we so, should run away from armchair mm. uh, commentary. True, true. Let's move straight now to these day newspapers. The top headline says, Adoke. By the way, you are yes. taking this day as a third paper. <laughs> 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 I want to charge you for. <laughs> you should have started with this. Accessory day. after the fact. <laughs> 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 so, at this day now, Adoke deported from Dubai, arrested by the EFCC. Uh, according to that report, um, the former Minister of Justice and uh, Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, Mohamed Bello Adoke is back here in Nigeria, uh, arrested by the EFCC. But his lawyer is saying, Michael Zekume is saying that his client came on its own violation uh, to, to Nigeria. This controversy about uh, Adoke. And uh, the, the fact is that the former AGF, who left the country in 2015, had pending criminal charge brought against him by the EFCC for alleged abuse of office and money laundering in respect of the granting of the oil prospecting license OPL 245 to Shell and ENI. What do you make of the scenario, Doctor? Well, I mean, I, I worked with the um, former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke. Yeah. And, you know, I have fond memories of him as a, you know, professional, as a very diligent person, as a man who is committed to the rule of law, and as an Attorney General, uh, who has an abiding faith in the supremacy of the rule of law and the constitution and democratic principles. But this is not about my impression of him. This is about a matter on the basis of which he has gone to court. And, you know, serially, the court had always found in its favor. Uh, first, he took a case to court to test the constitution, whether indeed a person working for a president, you know, can carry out lawful directives uh, given by the president. And in that particular case, the court ruled that, yes, he acted, you know, based on the directives of his principal and within the bounds of law. Secondly, you know, he went to court when a warrant of arrest was uh, issued, yeah. and that warrant of arrest was vacated. 
Now he was uh, arrested by Interpol, and uh, his lawyer has circulated a document to show that, look, he voluntarily chose to return to Nigeria uh, to answer to whatever charges that may be before him. Attorney General of the Federation, Malame, has assured us that the, Nigeria, the uh, Buhari government uh, is not out to victimize anybody, to witch hunt anybody, and that, you know, the government is committed to the rule of law. This is another opportunity, the Adoki case, for the Attorney General of the Federation to fulfill that reassurance that he gave, was it only yesterday yes. or so? Yes. Do you have more time to take a paper? Um, maybe one quick international story before okay. we head well, off. Okay, looking at the Guardian. Okay, the, we still have time. Okay, okay, the Guardian, the Guardian UK uh, says. Oh, unfortunately, we okay. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, that is thank all. you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank we'll see you, you on Monday, right? Yes, Monday. 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 <laughs>